Hello students, this is going to be another sample problem. I'm going to do a hydrate problem where you actually would have a hydrate salt and you would stick it in a furnace or something like that and you would dehydrate. It's a method that could be used to actually figure out what the number of waters is in the hydrate. And so right now I've given us a salt, but I've given us this unknown variable, X waters associated with this hydrate. So remember, these waters are not chemically bound to the salt. Rather, instead you have the salt and you have the crystal structure of this bigger picture, this bigger idea that has salt and some waters kind of wiggled in and stuck in certain locations associated with the salt. Those waters can be relatively easily driven off by heating. So this is going to look a little redundant, but it's super important for understanding the process where I'm going to write out the salt that we have. It's sodium sulfate dot. That dot is the symbol that we use to inform people that we are talking about a hydrate. And so dot some number x h2o there should be a dot up here too and this is what i was talking about when i was saying it's going to look a little redundant but it is actually different we're going to have our salt and this time instead of a dot i'm going to say plus x h2o and of course this arrow is just saying that we heated the substance here we're going to assume we drive off all the water so now you're left with what we call the anhydrous salt that is the no water salt and the mass of that is given in the problem. So now let's start filling in some of our numbers. We've got this many grams of the salt with no waters on it. The hydrate, that was the original guy, and I do have the mass of it as well. And now in looking what we have written down, you can see that a hydrate problem is pretty straightforward because conservation of mass, which must always hold, especially in nicely balanced chemical equations, would say that I have some large mass over here on the left and then it goes to this mass which I wrote the 0.17 grams plus this unknown mass over here. Well it's very simple to figure out just through subtraction what that unknown mass needs to be. So I take this and I subtract this value from it and I'm gonna get 0 0.216 and that's grams. So now you'll notice that we have the mass of all of the different species associated with this problem, but chemistry is never a game of masses. It's always a game of numbers, and so we need to use molar masses so that we can talk about number ratios of these things. You'll notice my hydrate salt is not a good place to start. I actually don't at the moment have any way to know what the molar mass of the hydrate salt is. The molar mass of that thing must actually include the mass of these different waters. But I don't know how many there are. I can figure out the molar mass of sodium sulfate. That's easy. And I've pre-calculated that for us. And that is 142.04 grams per mole. I can also get the molar mass of water, which we use all the time. 18.015 grams per mole. Okay, so let's see where we can get. I'm just drawing a line down here, keep the two sides separate. I'm going to take this mass and I'm going to divide by the appropriate molar mass, the 142 number, and I find that I'm going to have 0 0.001197 mole. That is the number of sodium sulfate units that I have associated with my original sample. And how many waters does that deal with? So divide this by the molar mass of H2O and you get 0 0.01199 mole. Now it's just coincidence on this problem. It doesn't always happen this way. But notice there's an extra zero here compared to here. But more or less these are the same numbers. What you always do is you take the number of salt units which should typically be the smaller of the two numbers, and you'll throw it in the denominator and make a ratio between this number of waters and the salt, and that's actually going to give us the, the hydrate. So when I take 0 0.01199 mole, that's the waters, and put that in the numerator, and divide this other guy, this smaller number, you'll see that this is going to be approximately 10. And what we've learned is that we get 10 waters. So that's my x value. So the way that I would write this out is I would say sodium sulfate dot 
nice big tin there, and then H2O. This is the full hydrate formula for us here. The part that I was talking about that was coincidence is that this happened to be a 10 for us. Sometimes it's going to be a 2, sometimes it might be a 6. It's very often an integer. It's not required to be. There are going to be some that are like a 1.5 sort of thing. And there's a naming scheme that goes along with this. And if you look up to the original question, I ask us to name it. It's pretty easy to look up where you just need to know the number of waters and it's going to follow that naming scheme where a 1 is going to be mono, a 2 is going to be di, 3 is going to be tri. It turns out 10 is deca. And so if I were to write this full thing out, I would have sodium sulfate decahydrate. And that communicates to other chemists this chemical formula. So hopefully that problem made sense to you. Like I said, hydrate problems are pretty straightforward, so if it did make sense, you should let your computer know.